Well, when my parents were living in Latvia, the war started and my father had to leave and uh, my mother decided she didn't want to stay in Latvia during the war. They were both afraid of communism. They were afraid of being sent to Siberia. Many people under communism in Latvia have been sent to Siberia. Not a lot of people know that. So they were allowed to leave for Germany to a displaced persons camp there. The place they were taken was Memmingen and they stayed there for five years. It was a long time. And that's where my mother met other like-minded people, Latvian ladies, who were interested in weaving. And the group of ladies got together almost daily in a basement in the old Air Force barracks of the camp that were converted to a studio and they had set up weaving looms. So they'd salvaged the looms from wherever they could find them. And they had a weaving group going and my mother was one of the teachers. And there came a time when one of the students of my mother wanted to get married, but she didn't have a bridal gown. Most Latvians got married in their national dress, their costumes. So the husband-to-be said he would make my mother a loom and my mother would weave it. So that's how this loom that I'm weaving on came about. They got the wood from the old Air Force barracks from the ruins there and the ruins are on display in this museum here behind me. It was quite um, a devastated area, but there was plenty of good wood there. And this is the costume similar to the one that was woven for this lady. And it was one of my fa mother's favorite costumes from Zemgale, from that region. It's a very floral pattern, again, with the back background in black cotton. So that's how this loom came about. After the five years of my parents um, being in the displaced persons camp in Germany, they were given the opportunity to travel either to Australia or to America. They chose Australia. My mother was allowed to take the weaving loom with her. It was um, packed up in Germany in a big crate that was as wide as the widest piece of wood. So you can imagine it was very wide. And my father built the crate. Anyway, my mother, my mother's father, my father and, and my brother, they all got together and lifted the crate everywhere they went, on the ship, off the ship. Then in Sydney, they got off and they had to go on the train. So the crate came off, went onto the train, and the train took them to Bathurst. And apparently they got to Bathurst at about two o'clock in the morning that night. They were so exhausted, when they got to their room, all they did was take the crate out and slept on it. So the first night was spent in Australia sleeping on weaving looms that was in a crate. <laughs> my parents arrived in Sydney and that's where we settled. My mother had lots of opportunities to do weaving because I belonged to a Latvian ethnic school, a Saturday school. So most of the girls in my class, their parents wanted them to have a Latvian costume. So, who was asked, my mum was asked to weave all the girls their Latvian costumes. I was in the second bedroom next to the weaving loom and I grew up hearing the beat of the loom and the constant weaving morning before work and at night when she came home she would weave and just about every weekend. And so I learned to weave whether I liked it or not. <laughs> As I was growing up, I thought, well, there, there's something in this weaving because my mother always had friends over. And it was a really happy place. My father was always helping her. He made all sorts of implements to go with the loom. I um, didn't get involved until much later when I was a teenager because it was just too complicated earlier than that. But during school holidays, I'd be spending two weeks <laughs> just sitting here with my mother and she'd pass me the thread and I'd take it and she'd pass me the next thread and slowly, slowly we'd thread up the loom. But I started to learn what, what she was doing. And this one in particular is based on one of my mother's designs, a similar weave to what Latvians weave, the bird's eye twill. And that's my version of it there. So it's very mathematical weaving and I guess because my mother was an accountant 
I think hence her passion for weaving. She could figure out her numbers and know exactly how many threads there were and where to um, count. They're just various samples, various colours, all based on this same threading of the bird's eye twill. And they can be either cushions or placemats, whatever you like. And this is a bit thicker, some rags uh, woven in. And this next one is also made out of uh, rags that my mother's cut up and recycled old clothing. And this particular one is my father's pyjamas. <laughs> she used to cut up um, shirts and pants and everything else and sew them together into one long strip. Anyway, when I was weaving this one, there was a bit of oil paint on one of the strips and I thought, oh, what's that? And I could remember my father, he painted our dog kennel a red, with a red roof and that's part of the oil paint and that brought back lots of memories. <laughs> so the emotions that you put into your weaving. This is another rag rug um, or mat based on my father's pants. <laughs> so my mother recycled everything, everything that was weavable. And there's another one. Oh, and the, the white one in the middle, she's recycled some bandages. <laughs> I think uh, she had a sore foot and, <laughs> and she, after the foot healed, <laughs> she recycled the bandages and wove them in. There you are. My mother used to buy a lot of bluebell crepe knitting wool for her weaving, but often she didn't need the full ply, she needed smaller yarns, thinner yarns, and she realised that there were three plies in a lot of these th thicker wools. Now what my father did, he invented an unplying machine for her, which looks like this. You put the, the thick wool onto this spool here and he could weld. So my father made this himself out of old recycled materials and metals. And this is a peach can, the top and bottom, lid and the bottom. And these are all parts that he's found around the house and elsewhere and old spools and you wind the wool here and then you turn these handles to get it into three single plies. a doll dressed in national costume. It's a Abrina national costume. It's from the eastern part of Latvia. It was the only costume in Latvia that is entirely white in the skirt besides the bottom which is red but my mother want, wanted me to wear that for my christening. Every Latvian household uh, perhaps had a doll dressed in national costume so that's why we had one and we dressed it in my uh, christening outfit. And the skirt in particular is woven in the pattern that is on the loom now. The threading on the loom can create this pattern that is in the Abrina costume. This is Latvian weaving techniques, a book that I wrote together with, with my mother. She helped me put it all together. I actually translated my mother's weaving notes from Latvian into English. She collected a lot of weaving samples and notes while she was at the displaced persons camp. So I put it all in, in a book in English. Took photos of this loom, made up drawings of the graphs. That's my daughter, Kaya, wearing my old national costume. And these are all 
examples of drawings my mother's done in old notebooks while she was at the camp over the five years and I've just reproduced them here in the book. And the photographs are of my mother's weavings. So you can see how many drawings she would have done over the years because these are all copies of her work and her weavings. And that's Mr. Berks, and that's the lady who he married, and that's the national costume that my mother wove. She wove the skirt and the shawl. And then she was married in this church in Bavaria, and this is the reception afterwards. And there's my mother there. So they're all celebrating the wedding, and there's the married couple there. Next picture is of the camp at Memmingen. And that's a view looking down from the window of my parents' room down into the ruins there. And this is a picture of me in... first one is of me in my national costume when I was only a baby. I was about one year old and that was my christening outfit. And here's a picture of my mother and father when they um, were celebrating I think it was their 50th wedding anniversary. And this is just a picture of the early days, 1950. After they moved to Australia, they were living in Bathurst and then they were transferred to Parks. And that's their um, room there in Parks Camp.